Today, we're going to be talking about the bull run that has just been confirmed by this recent Bitcoin breakout. Now, we all knew it was coming. We've known this has been coming. The writing has been on the wall for what feels like years. And in a climate like this, where essentially everybody's watching uh, for something to happen, and all right, cool, cool, cool. Great, great. In a climate like this, where people are all watching one chart, like the Bitcoin chart, for years, it can sometimes feel like the bull run may never happen. And the significant amount of time that it's taken for us to get to this moment, to me, is the confirmation, right? It's taken so long that it's not obvious, right? Even though it seems obvious that Bitcoin's going to bull, it's not obvious. And you have probably the vast majority of people who are looking at the space from the outside still thinking crypto is incredibly risky and a losing game. When if you've been around over the last few weeks and months, you'll know that crypto is the hottest industry for essentially building wealth that currently exists in the world. And we're just getting started on this bull run because Bitcoin has, for the first time, just broken out of its trend and started to move. Now, does this mean that Bitcoin is going to move without stop, without failure? Well, we're not quite sure exactly what the path is. We're not quite sure what the timeline is on how Bitcoin moves. But we do know that it is expected, just like with all the previous cycles, that the crypto industry will expand dramatically to orders of magnitude bigger than it was before. And the fact that we've seen the altcoins take off and explode like this before Bitcoin has even moved, that is a triple confirmation that we're looking at a bull run of uh, potential historic magnitude. Now, I've talked about this a few times on the channel, and I'm going to keep talking about this because what matters uh, tremendously right now is that we're seeing metrics that not only parody 2016, but are actually even more advantageous, more bullish than in 2016. As I sh I've shown this chart a few times, this is the amount of dormant Bitcoin supply that was, uh, as you can see here, 2016 is highlighted. 2016, we had about just under 60% dormant Bitcoin supply. And right now, we've just confirmed that dormant Bitcoin supply is 66%. Here, just over 65%, just below 66. 66%, that means it's higher than it was in 2016. And this is, of course, in the week that we have the news about uh, Visa, MasterCard, PayPal. We also got Bitcoin just deemed to be money. Bitcoin is now a form of money. And all of these uh, huge pieces of news swirl together to become what I feel like is a perfect storm. Meanwhile, we have the explosion of DeFi on Ethereum. We have the supposed upgrade of Ethereum to Ethereum 2. And in you know essentially throughout all these pieces of news, there's a common thread, which is Bitcoin and crypto are about to go parabolic. And if the, what we've seen is that essentially these markets have exploded with federal stimulus. And given the news, it seems like we're in for at least a few more months of federal stimulus, at which, you know, during this entire time, we should see a tremendous upward trend. And if Bitcoin continues to break through its resistances, then I believe the actual ceiling for altcoins expand dramatically in that situation with increased liquidity and increased market caps across the industry. We're going to be talking about some... Uh, altcoins that I feel like are extremely compelling in this particular environment. Some altcoins that I think should absolutely be on your radar if they're not already on your radar and things that I'm looking into uh, in one coin in particular that I actually grabbed a bag of uh, just over this weekend and that I'm excited for because I feel like it's about to make a big move. So if you guys are excited for all that, if you guys are excited for this episode, do me a favor and smash the like button. It really helps get more viewers in here. We got almost 400 people in here and only 86 likes. Week on the likes, guys. Let's get a like spike going. BT Sierra Silver, what do you think? Bitcoin all the way. Uh, I'm going to see the chats for just one second. ERD pumping. Ample is blowing it out of the park. Ada souring. Uh, here's the thing. My next tab is Ampleforth. Ampleforth is an unbelievable token, right? This token is absolutely skyrocketing. Here we have, yeah, let's get to the market cap chart. Let's look at this market cap. Let's look at this market cap growth. We were talking about them about here. Uh, we had a market cap, no, it was about 250 million uh, when we were talking about them. And now, in just days, in just days, they're up here at 700 million. They were actually over 700 million at some point today, I believe. Um, 
completely monstrous, monstrous growth, 3x in just days. And this is already after it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Something special is going on in the Ampleforth community. I don't know if you guys have been inside the Ampleforth chat rooms. I've been up in there in the Telegram groups. And I'll say that Ampleforth possesses the traits, the various traits that I think make it uh, a significant train that doesn't show signs of stopping anytime soon. And the reason why it's not stopping is because it offers all of the things that you would want out of a cryptocurrency and also this other factor that no other cryptocurrency has actually figured out how to achieve, which is non-correlation. So the fact that Ample is, you know, in the end supposed to hold a somewhat stable value uh, gives it this sort of ability to have farther reaching use cases than something uh, that changes dramatically out of the, over the course of a day. Obviously, it's still a baby, and so seeing it uh, essentially sit $2 above where it should, that's not part of the long-term plan. But in this short term, it feels as though uh, this thing is just continuing to pick up steam. And be the reason why it's picking up steam is because it's a positive reinforcement cycle. The rebase, which constantly is adding tokens to people's wallets. If you guys don't know how Ample works, as the price uh, expands to be above a dollar, uh, about a dollar five cents, I believe, is the threshold, they will start adding coins to your wallet, uh, expecting for people to sell and bring the price back down to a dollar. So the longer it stays above a dollar, the uh, more times that they're going to, quote, rebase, which happens at 7 p.m. Pacific time or 2 p.m. UTC, I believe, or uh, 2 o'clock UTC, uh, that is when they start adding coins to your wallet. And I've been watching my wallet over the last few days, and it is bananas how many more coins I have in there than I had just a couple of days ago. And that's a really exciting feeling to wake up every day and have more money in your wallet. It's great to see the price go up too. Obviously, you have a similar sort of concept that you're looking at with Bitcoin, but the way it's being executed, I believe, feels more like passive income to people because you're actually having more of the token. So you feel like you're getting paid out. And that feeling makes it extremely exciting. And that excitement is palpable in the Ampleforth community. And when communities start popping out, that when communities are able to garner that kind of level of grassroots excitement, it reminds me of th the memes in this community remind me of Chainlink in some ways. They remind me of all of the crypto memes kind of put together. There is a new meme being put in that Telegram group every 30 seconds. And uh, I think it was Chico Crypto did a, did a segment on how Chainlink is going to win because it has the best memes or something. Um, and there's a lot of people who, you know, well understand that memes are a very powerful indicator of strength in a cryptocurrency community. And Ample is absolutely killing the game when it comes to the memes. I'm not going to go into Telegram and show it on the live stream just because you never know what things pop up in uh, Telegram uh, chats. So I'm just going to like tell you guys to go check it out. Uh, their, their Telegram group is just Ampleforth protocol, I think. Uh, but at any rate, at any rate this, uh, this market cap continues to explode. Um, it's hard not to keep FOMOing and buying more. Obviously, I like that I got in way earlier than this, and I'm going to like that it's going to continue to compound. Uh, but there's something that feels like this thing could end up being a standout to the tune of making its way, you know, it's been rifling through the, the top 100, like it doesn't even care. And so seeing this thing make its way from the, what is it, at 20, 28, seeing this thing pop up above a billion dollars or so, where would that put it? Uh, that would put it right around the low 20s. Yeah, you know, I don't see the same type of upward mobility in, in these coins that it's going to be passing. And especially if uh, people start, you know, in any way using it like stable coins, there's an argument that this thing could keep going. I don't know. I think this thing could really keep uh, going. It's, it's hard not to keep FOMOing into it. I really like what they're doing. Let me know in the chat. Are you guys excited about Ample? Are you guys excited as I am? Because I, I'm really excited about this coin. And uh, there's another coin that we're going to be talking about that's also extremely exciting uh, on the level of Ample, I think, uh, based on its explosion. But before we go there, I wanted to talk about Somi Social, which is this chart here, which exploded because they released some good news talking about how they had some really strong influencers coming onto their platform. And I originally wanted to build a social media app for cryptocurrencies. However, this was during the sort of trough of the bear market, uh, just the value for altcoins and crypto. No one cared, and, and the ability to build a social community around it was very low. Uh, so we went into gaming. However, this uh, is showing me that the desire to uh, actually have a social 
app that really pays its users and monetizes the data and the advertisement and reflects it back to the users is growing again. And so this is kind of like a you know Steam 2.0 or something like that, a, uh, a new social media app here. Um, and the reason why I bring it up is because this thing 10 x right? Absolutely monstrous growth on the release of some news. And I've been hearing about a similar project called Howdo, which is maybe slightly less focused on the decentralization aspect, but they're really focused on the cryptocurrency aspect. And they're com- so obviously this is the dumbest name for any project I've ever seen. And I honestly didn't even research it that much because of the name, the name's so bad. Uh, but then after getting over that, I was like, I'm gonna watch this. Cause if this thing uh, potentially has some news and this, if they have a potential rollout strategy that makes sense, and uh, this thing could do some serious moves. And so I'm keeping my eye on this. It just jumped like 40% last night. So I'm thinking there might be some news coming up. Um, I'm excited about this thing. And as I started to dig into it, it seems like they have a couple hundred million uh, users uh, that are uh, followers of these influencers that they're going to launch the platform with. So distribution, uh, when you have that many uh, different types of influencers with that big of fan bases, it could be pretty powerful, right? So I think there's a, an argument to be made that decentralized social media is potentially back. You know, uh, the actual appetite for these projects is potentially back. And you know, as you know, you know, social media is one of the biggest businesses online. I'm also not a big believer that these coins will necessarily like win the ultimate war for social media. Like I think these companies like TikTok and uh, Instagram, Facebook, right? All of the Facebook apps, WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, Facebook itself. I think that they have a pretty strong grip on their communities. However, um, I think there's a potential considering how low these market caps are, you know, 20 million, right? Compared to hundreds of billions, if not trillions, right? There's there's room to move here, right? That's all I'm saying is there's room for these to move up uh, dramatically. And so I've now once again started uh, considering these social media projects like Howdo, and I actually got myself some Howdo this weekend. So that's how I feel about it. Uh, that Martini guy, who you guys may or may not know, is a YouTuber in the space and then just uh, joined the team last year. Um, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know he was on the team. And yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting time here in crypto land where we're finally getting... Uh, social media cryptos are surfacing again, which I think if done right could be huge, but no one's been able to do it right. No one's been able to pull it off. So there's this huge void in the market there where we know we're getting hosed on social media. We know we're getting taken advantage of. We know our data is being sold. We know we're not making money on the ads like the actual platforms are. And so if there is an opening there where we could actually get a decentralized social media to be somewhat popular, I think that's a huge step forward for the industry and especially distribution. Uh, Just extremely hard, extremely hard to pull off because even if those 400 million uh, users come in and start using it, uh, there's no guarantee that they're going to stay and continue to be uh, active members of the community even if they sign up. So I want to show you this. Obviously, congrats to the Ethereum fan. Take uh, the Ethereum fam. Take a second and give give yourself a round of applause. This has been a long time coming, uh, this road back to 300 for Ethereum and seeing it happen on so much strength, going from strength to strength. First DeFi explosion. Now, apparently, they're pushing like crazy to ship ETH2. If that all happens, you know, uh, really happy for the Ethereum community who has really stuck with it through all of, you know, the B rating, through all of the criticism. Um, And that would be good for the space. That would be really good for the space. Um, But if it doesn't, if it doesn't end up occurring that ETH is able to scale successfully, and by the way, I did a video yesterday on as ETH does grow and as they move into staking, uh, I covered two coins that I think are going to do extremely well with that change. And one of those is Rocket Pool, which essentially allows you to stake coins without the minimum 32 Ether that you would be required to have, which if ETH pops up to, you know, $500 or $1,000 as we move towards ETH2, I think that's totally possible. Yeah, $32,000 is a bit much, right? It's a bit steep for people. Um, so uh, seeing there be an alternative means to stake with Rocket Pool, being able to stake as little as 0.01 Ether, that's huge for being able to get more people into the staking mechanism, and that's going to be uh, good for Ethereum's price. But speaking of Ethereum, and a pen- uh, if they do not scale, there's a new kid on the block that's been making tons of tons and tons of noise, which is this Elrond project. And obviously, I've talked about it, I've mentioned it. It's so hot. I'm sure all you guys know all about Elrond. You guys were talking about it in the chat before I got in there. They are days away from their mainnet launch, and they are promising a Web3 or a, or a, a new generation of blockchain smart contracts. 
And so if they're able to deliver essentially uh, this scalability that everyone has desperate has pretty much desperately been looking for, then there could be great things to be done there. You know, it's worth noting that Elrond's price has been absolutely going parabolic. So there's so much excitement behind this, and I think that has a lot to do with their community and marketing. They're constantly making partnerships, like this uh, Fiat uh, Gateway LTV Bank. Um, they're also partnering with things like uh, Crypto.com, one of the best projects in the business. Uh, which I'm a big fan of, and I'm also a channel partner of. Uh, they're allowing fiat uh, or withdrawals and deposits, and you can manage your ERD there. I think they even have passive staking for it. And then uh, they also have uh, Swipe, which is, of course, Crypto.com's uh, biggest competitor now in Binance chain, or uh, with Binance, they just got acquired. Uh, we covered Swipe before they pumped. So everyone who is watching the channel, guys, if you guys are not subscribed with bell notifications on, you're going to miss some of these. You could have gotten in on Swipe uh, before this crazy pump that happened because we covered it before it pumped. And then Utrust, one of my favorite projects uh, for being a payments gateway, kind of like the PayPal of crypto, if you will. They're integrating uh, with Utrust. So again, just massive partnerships after partnerships after partnerships. And here they're actually going to allow for Am uh, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, credit cards, bank transfers, 162 countries plus the 100 fiat on ramps coming to Elrond via MoonPay. So again, yet another massive integration. Uh, and, and they just are on fire with these announcements and integrations. And this one in particular is one that I want to talk about because this brings us to another coin that we're going to be discussing today, which is Orion Protocol. And so Orion Protocol is going to be deploying their liquidity aggregation and DeFi products on Elrond. Essentially, uh, they have these four product, uh, products, which is the Orion Terminal uh, that they're going to be deploying the ETH Bridge and MetaMask, Orion Brokers, and then the DeFi Wallet and Assets. And so they're saying here that Elrond's high throughput and low latency smart contract execution platform makes for a great starting point for Orion, who will deploy the Orion Exchange on our blockchain, com uh, complete with orders, validation logic, trade exchange, and signed order messages. They're also having the ETH Bridge and MetaMask, right? So they're uh, Orion here will further develop additional integration tools to support their visions such as MetaMask integration and Ethereum Bridge. This is huge, right? If Orion or sorry, Elrond essentially becomes like a second layer to Ethereum through this bridge, allowing for people to have transaction and access to the uh, assets on Ethereum, well, that is good for everyone, especially as Ethereum has sort of become the de facto layer two solution for Bitcoin. Right now, there's so much Bitcoin locked up in Ethereum DeFi. And as we see Bitcoin start to make a move, as we see DeFi continue to prove itself out and show that you can get productivity out of your assets by lending them, we can see that these uh, second layers, right? If you see Ethereum as a second layer to Bitcoin in some ways, and now Elrond supporting Ethereum by having this bridge, we can start seeing that the throughput made possible in the blockchain space is set to grow dramatically. And there couldn't be a better time because if the user experience is as bad as it was in 2017 when we got the last bull run, it's going to put a serious breaker on this whole uh, crypto party we're having, I believe. So hopping over, let's talk a little bit more about Orion because uh, this is they're calling this the only trading terminal you need. Endless liquidity, one platform, zero risk. So totally decentralized, I guess that's what they're meaning by zero risk. Um, but they're saying that they're going to aggregate bottomless liquidity from all major exchanges, centralized plus decentralized, providing rich trading tools in one easy to use platform. So this is essentially solving the biggest, you know, the, the white buffalo of trading issues going on on DEXs, which is liquidity, right? It's too long and tricky and there's too much slippage when you're trading on DEXs. Even today, even despite all of the amazing growth of the Uniswap experience, of the uh, DEXs on Ethereum, what we're seeing is that there's still issues here. So having the ability, uh, and I'll scroll this up a bit so you can see it, having the ability to access serious liquidity is definitely a necessary aspect of the future of blockchain assets of the future of the decentralized trading experience, the future of DeFi relies on the growth of liquidity. Um, so, you know, this is a very interesting, interesting token. And I like it because although it's been doing well, it's not gone too crazy, right? Uh, when it first hit the market just days ago, right? This thing's a baby. Uh, it was at a market cap of about 5 million. It's now at a market cap of about 10 million. Still pretty much 
uh, a micro, right? It's It's gone up a lot, but it's still a micro. So as they go forward and try to prove out their theses, uh, try to prove out that they are going to actually deliver these uh, essential resources first to Elrond, and then of course uh, to many other uh, to many other chains. Given that they're trying to be uh, very much so an interoperable bridge type uh, resource, so I think the excitement about Elrond. Um, obviously, Elrond is a pretty massive coin already. Um, where is ERD right now? Here we go. They're number forty here on the list, three hundred million. But of course, you know. If you're going to compare them to, you know, the king, which is Ethereum at 34 billion, and we all think that Ethereum is going to triple up from here before the end of the year, maybe a thousand dollar Ethereum, which would mean a hundred billion dollar market cap, that makes this whole 400 million dollar market cap on Elrond seem a little bit less, you know, gargantuanly big. It's it's definitely possible to still have some serious growth. And like I said, I covered Ampleforth last week or so when this was at uh, when it was around this level of market cap and look at it now, 700 million. So a lot can happen and it can keep happening for Elrond if they actually deliver. Though it's worth noting that most main uh, that most mainnet launches come with a mainnet dump. It's just kind of the reality that people like to buy the rumor, they like to pr- uh, front run these events, and then uh, the smart money, the smart guys, will just start dumping, right? And so that can create uh, some downward price trajectory for Elrond after the mainnet no- mainnet launch. And it's worth noting that that is totally possible. However, um, Elrond and Orion together. Uh, form a pretty interesting set of tokens to be looking at as we are in this new phase, like this new era where we're even having more dormant Bitcoin supply than before. And look, the 2011 bull run had less dormant Bitcoin supply than the 2013 run, and then the 2016 run had even more. And so it makes sense that if we're going to try to replicate these uh, these different price trajectories that happened after the halving of 2016 and the halving of 2012, that we should have a similar growth of the percentage of Bitcoin that's made dormant. That would make it even more solid, the narrative, that this is the internet's chosen store of value. Very exciting stuff. And really, I think Bitcoin remains unchallenged in its decentralization, its security model. Uh, There's so many things to love about Bitcoin, uh, especially the 66% uh, percent of people or percent of Bitcoin that are now uh, have not moved in over a year. And even something like Ampleforth, right, which I'm a huge fan of. Where's Ample? Get back. Get me back to my Ample. Especially something like Ampleforth, which is an awesome coin, is still, I can criticize it by saying it's not nearly as decentralized as it should be. The coins are way too much in the hands of the team. They only did a 10% sale on their IEO. They really need to figure out how to decentralize this coin a little more. If they do that, if they decentralize Ampleforth just a little more, not a little more, I think they need a significant policy towards decentralization of the coin, personally. And if they do that, that would sort of remove my only hesitations about this coin. That would remove my, my biggest complaints. Uh, but for the most part, this thing has been absolutely beasting. Uh, and yeah, I'm expecting it to continue to push up towards that $4 range. Because if we see here, if we're looking at the price since it got hot this year, we see that, yeah, once it gets up to about $4, it, it had a huge correction down. Uh, once it gets up, it's got some serious resistance here around $3. You can see stretching back as soon as it gets up to around three dollars, tends to dump down. Um, but if it gets up beyond uh, three dollars, yeah, four dollars would be another big point of resistance. So um, as you go forward, you know, I personally, I'm not trading my amples. I'm just sitting on them uh, because I like seeing them compound. If anything, I'm just adding. However, it's worth noting that here you're seeing, you know, repeated uh, different points of resistance here around three dollars, and that might be indicative, right? Maybe there's a game to be played if you know when the coin's going to dump a little bit. Uh, you're going to want to, you know, sell at these highs and rebuy down here, just trying to stack more amples if you want to. Um, but let me know if you guys have any trading strategies on Ample. Let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it for today, guys. I just wanted to go over Orion. I wanted to talk about, you know, if Elrond is, you know, essentially Elrond and their connection with Orion, which, you know, a lot of people are very excited about Elrond. I wanted to cover how do and you do uh, because I, I've been hearing about this project a lot. And I was telling myself, if I see it make a big jump, if I see it make a big move, I'm going to get a bag. And so that was what it, that's what I did. Uh, they have an interesting product and social media coins are starting to actually perform again. So I think it's definitely worth checking into. Uh, and right now, I'm going to uh, look at the chat now, get into the chat and start answering some questions. 
you're already pumping. Ample is blowing it out of the park. Yep. Oh, let me scroll down. Let me get to current. Kusama. Yeah, I really like Kusama. I really like Kusama. Uh, they've grown. They've grown a lot. You know, it's it's for what it is. I feel like it's grown a lot, and I'm not sure if it's too expensive to to be buying right now. What does success look like for ERD? Uh, success would be building, I guess, first and foremost on ERD would be building a, a DeFi ecosystem that does two things. That one, aggregates a ton of liquidity, is able to provide security and productivity to a wide variety of assets. And two, I believe that what Elrond should be doing is trying to make Ethereum, DeFi even better and more higher performance. And if it's able to, to succeed at doing those things, then we can look into the other fun use cases of social media, gaming, all that stuff that I think is a big part of the next phase of blockchain. However, its first and foremost goal is very clear cut here in this landscape, which is that DeFi is the hottest trend that is maybe uh, since the ICO boom, since the ICO boom rather, DeFi is the hottest trend in the market. So if it's able to fit into that trend, essentially offer products that are even better than on Ethereum or offer solutions that make products better on Ethereum, it becomes then ingrained as a part of the DeFi ecosystem, as a part of the most valuable sort of subset of the crypto economy. And then from there, it can start working on more highfalutin goals, more long reaching goals, like building a competitive gaming sort of ecosystem, building more high throughput stuff, uh, blockchain for enterprise and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, Aleph, Aleph, like Aleph's been mooning. I think it did like 20, 20 X growth. Um, I know that zombie had talked about Aleph. And so that was a great call by zombie. Give zombie some love here, guys. We have 650 people in here. This is easily the most people I've ever had in the chat. Guys, flatter me here and go smash that like, please. I appreciate it. If you guys are enjoying the information I'm bringing each and every day, I'm pushing myself like crazy to bring you guys the most information. I know a lot of you may know this, a lot of you may not know this, but I actually run a company as well. Uh, making content is not the only thing I do all day. I have a gaming company, a blockchain gaming company that we're gonna be rolling out our closed beta soon. So my days have been like 16 plus hours and uh, making this content is something that I care tremendously about because uh, I think right now is one of the most important times in the industry to be uh, spreading good information and helping empower the audience uh, to take advantage of what I think of as potentially the greatest bull cycle that will ever occur in our financial markets. Because I don't think if these trends continue and federal stimulus continues, I think that asset prices are going to soar uh, like we've never seen in an exponential way. And that the only thing that we could do to fix the uh, income inequality gap is to actually continue to print money. And so if I'm correct about that, then this recurring cycle will make things like Bitcoin, which we talk about almost every day here, and other things like decentralized finance assets, uh, different blockchain assets, things with fixed supply, hard cap supplies, or things like uh, Ample, where you actually own a fixed percentage of the network, those types of assets are going to grow uh, by exponential orders of magnitude. Of course, as I say every single time, this bull market could end tomorrow. Things could change. Things have been known to change dramatically and quickly in crypto land. But the fact that this bull market is not coming on the heels of a one and a half year bull run from Bitcoin, the fact that this altcoin season is coming what felt like out of the blue after cryptos had just been crushed and destroyed and it was nonstop carnage for three plus years, that is what makes me feel like we're just at the beginning of something. And I could be wrong, I've been wrong before, but I believe that the macro landscape behind this altcoin season and this crypto bull run is unprecedented, unparalleled, and that if stimulus continues, which I believe is the only option right now, especially if Donald Trump wins the presidency. If Donald Trump wins the presidency, the, uh, the, the Congress will want that president to have all the tools available. So I believe that if Donald Trump continues as president, that it will create more stimulus. They'll print more money without question uh, because the Republicans won't block that. And then with that increase in stimulus, we'll see a continual flooding uh, or a continual exponential growth of asset prices, including cryptocurrencies. Okay, hodl them amps. Hodl them amps. You get paid for drinking water with wet coin. <laughs> I need that. Sorry, that made me laugh. I've never seen that. 
Uh, Kava is running, get ready. Yeah, I've talked about Kava many times on this channel. I was actually comment, uh, contacted by the team uh, last year and I didn't want to do a, a deal with them because I just, I very much so don't uh, go in with projects if I don't believe that there's a, a real big future there. And I just, I was late. I, I didn't see the potential. And so I didn't want to expose my community to something I wasn't sure about. Um, and so, yeah, I'm regretting. I'm regretting not doing a collaboration with Kava because I had the opportunity to. As, as you guys know, I'm telling you, I'm not always right. But right now, the trends are very clear. And I believe that the trend is uh, stimulus equals cryptocurrencies mooning uh, almost without fail over the next few months and years. Yeah, I'm really into ORN and ERD. Like I said, I just got a bag of how do. I'm really into uh, Ample. As I've said, I'm fanboying over Ample, to be honest. Yeah, it broke a two-year trend, Bitcoin, or more. Adam or Ren. So personally, uh, I like. I think what Adam is part of with Cosmos has laid the foundation for some amazing use cases. I'm not an expert in Cosmos or Adam. However, I am very bullish in what Ren is doing, and I believe that the growth of the Bitcoin price, the growth of wealth in the Bitcoin uh, uh, network, is a surefire translation to an increase in use, uh, usage of wrapping that Bitcoin and sending it over to, uh, to Ethereum to become productive. So I see that as being something that will absolutely explode uh, with the continued growth of DeFi. And of course, now with a bull run in Bitcoin, the value of wrapping that Bitcoin, especially trustlessly, has become immense, right? Every dollar that Bitcoin grows in value is a significant boost to the amount of value that Ren brings in wrapping that token and bringing it over to Ethereum. Obviously, it's worth noting, Ren is not the only solution for doing this. However, it is the trustless solution, the decentralized solution. And I believe that that is the future, right? So I always bet on the future. And uh, to me, Ren is a phenomenal, phenomenal project. I've done a project on them. or I've done a video on them. I cannot wait to see what happens with Ren. Uh, and I'm really pumped on their tokenomics as well. Cosmos was my dad's name. Makes me smile. <laughs> Cosmos was my dad's name. Miss you, dad. We miss you, dad. Shout out to your dad. Acropolis, yes, I, did, I covered Acropolis, big fan. When the Dow crashes, crypto will too. I believe, yes, if the, I believe that if the Dow crashes, crypto will too, or actually specifically the NASDAQ. If NASDAQ crashes, I believe crypto will feel uh, some ripples. Because if you look at these charts, right, here, I'll bring them up for you. I'll bring them up for you so you can see. Uh, I brought them up on my last video. But if we look at, oh, sorry, let's go here. If we look at the NASDAQ. We look at this chart over the last six months, and then we take a have a gander at the total cryptocurrency market caps over a similar period. Let's do stretch that out. Come on, be easy on me. Cool. So as we look at these uh, these charts here, we see at about mid March we see a total reversal after the coronavirus panic, right? We see a total reversal. This was right as stimulus was announced in mid March. If we look at the Nasdaq, we see this exact same crash on coronavirus uncertainty. Stimulus is announced, and we have unabated growth. Unabated growth. Not to mention staggeringly, staggeringly similar numbers. We have 6860 right here. And it grows up to, you know, at a high up here, almost 11,000. So really, you know, like a 1.8x, right? And then we go to the crypto charts and we see that the markets grow from about 144 up to uh, when I was doing this yesterday, it was right about 288, right? Or, you know, within spitting distance of 2x, right? Obviously, cryptos have uh, outpaced the NASDAQ a little bit. But if we go into Bitcoin, um, let's look at the Bitcoin chart really quick. Let's see if that one matches up as well. Um, okay. Sorry, guys. When I stream, sometimes the internet's a little slow. Uh, we see, you know, Bitcoin come from about 5,200 right up. And, you know, it's just under 2x, right? Just under 2x growth from its crash. And this is right when stimulus is announced. And we get Bitcoin up here at about 9,900, right? Which is within spitting distance of a 2x, a 1.8, whatever. So what do I think? Do I think that there are correlations between these two assets? <laughs> I mean, look at the charts. One chart, two chart. Uh, or I, I got clicked off the, market, uh, the total market caps. But they're the same chart, guys. They're the same chart. 
So yeah, I think there's a huge correlation here. I think that if stimulus continues, which I believe it will, because I believe there's no other option right now, there's no political will to stop it, uh, the administration has shown that it wants to keep spending and that it will spend its way out of this. And so if that attitude does not drastically shift, then we will continue to see ballooning of asset prices because that cash, all that free cash, needs to find a home. And that means more expensive properties, that means more expensive stocks, that means more expensive crypto. And the longer we see free money floating in, you know, essentially flooding the ecosystem, the longer these continue to rise. Now, I'm also a believer that this is all leading us to a permanent government stipend. I'm a believer that whether it happens tomorrow, the next day, or months from now, years from now, I believe that there's some concept of a UBI that will be put out in America, and that form of univers that universal basic income, which will just have to exist because there's just not the same opportunities uh, during this pandemic and probably for the foreseeable future thereafter. And we haven't been able to successfully rebuild significant, you know, production or manufacturing industries that would empower the middle class to grow again organically. There just simply has to be another mechanism to keep people afloat. So I believe that there's a huge likelihood of a UBI. And if these things all come together, this all comes together, then that means that these asset prices might continue to soar, not just for the next few days, but for the next few years and potentially maybe even without stop because we know now that it's only rich people that own stocks. We've seen it. Only something like less than 20% of non-wealthy individuals own stock. Stock is owned by the wealthy and the wealthy uh, in this particular case are set to keep getting wealthier as they are anchored in assets that are not losing value. Whereas as we start to flood the market with free cash, that cash will inevitably lose its value. And so you'll have the people who are in cash and you'll have the people who are in assets. And in the end, I, I see that we might be drifting away from a possibility for the people who are just in cash to ever gain a significant amount of assets. And so my prediction for this is if stimulus continues and we end up drifting towards a UBI, then this could be a bull run that really in these assets as denominated in US dollar doesn't really stop. That's a potential reality. So let me know what you guys think about that theory. I'm gonna pop back into the full frame mode. We're going to take this filter off my camera. And here I am. What's going on, guys? Here to answer some questions. So good to hang out with you guys here on this wonderful Sunday evening. Who else is excited for another week of smashing crypto gains? I hope that it continues. If this thing continues, and I believe it will based on the federal stimulus, we have some fun times ahead. So we say Elrond will not stop. Let's hope not. I think it's a great project. Uh, very impressed with its growth. Uh, we have, what is this? Thoughts on one ledger. Who's spamming? Man, I need to get a moderator. Oops. Wait. Nope. Uh, yes, SXP long. Let's check in on SXP. I haven't looked at SXP in uh, a couple of days, um, but I've been long on SXP. I've been long on S SXP. So they're right now sitting at 125 million market cap. Yep. I think they're a good project. Uh, I've been long on them. I don't know how quickly they'll continue to grow. But yeah, up here at $1.88. Yeah, I think I made the video on them when they were down at about a dollar or so. Um, or maybe even less, like 75 cents. Um, so yeah, if you got in then, you would have done great. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if they'll continue, but I'm holding my bags. I have my bags. My bags are packed. I made a video about Ample. Yes, if you guys want to know more about Ample, I did a deep dive on it. I might have to do another one because some people don't seem to understand what I'm saying. There's something about Ample that just seems to defy people's understanding. They needed to explain like seven times. So, uh, so yeah, maybe I'll make another video about Ample. If you guys think I should make another video about Ample, do me a favor and smash the likes. Do I think that BTC whales and other whales are planning to decouple coupling the stock market? Wouldn't it be a good chance for crypto's momentum in the sun? So here's the way I see it right now. Um, in the end, global wealth is a hard thing to completely unseat. It's, it's going to be hard to take wealth away from all the wealthy and just put it in the hands of the people who don't have it. And the stock market and these commodities markets tend to pump and grow in, you know, with good times things grow and in bad times they contract. You have assets like gold, which tend to do well as a, a sort of counter, you know, balancing asset. 
Um, but for right now, the cryptos are trading like an extension of the stock market, like an extension of the NASDAQ, essentially like penny stocks on the NASDAQ. So I think that there's a huge likelihood that in the future, that Bitcoin could decouple completely. However, right now, um, you know, I'm seeing that uh, this stimulus, in my opinion, is what's floating the crypto and what's brought it all back to life. And that this new life is now attracting more users like before because people came into crypto because they heard of everyone getting hilariously rich. And that's what's going on right now is people are getting hilariously rich in DeFi. And I've been excited. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I've been up all night, all night checking my block folio. I've been checking prices. I'm doing research all the time. I'm, uh, I'm addicted to crypto right now. And I'm so excited about it. And so I'm telling people about it. I'm getting people around me excited about it, like all of you. And so in my opinion, uh, the opportunity to decouple is there. But I'm also under the belief that the stock market, the commodities markets, uh, they are all going to explode with value, especially uh, the properties market, hard assets. I believe that anything that's non-cash, non-liquid is going to explode in value because this excess liquidity is just flooding the market, pure and simple. There's free cash and, you're, and you can store it in things that are going to go up in value. And it's a recurring sort of a uh, positive reinforcement loop for those who are getting the vast sums of the cash, which we know something like 97 cents on every dollar has gone to mega corporations or the billionaires, bankers, finance your class. So we know that only three cents on the dollar is trickling down to the average worker. So in this, in this climate, it's clear to see that that free cash is going to get stored in assets that will accrue value and that the cash itself will continue to lose value. Uh, we even heard about the Federal Reserve sort of you know, ignoring their 2% inflation target for the year. And so there is a very real possibility of hyperinflation in the future. Um, I'm not saying that that's what's happening now. I'm saying that the stimulus seems to be making its way into assets. And if that continues to be the case, well, I believe if they continue to approve stimulus bills, that that will continue to be the case. And if that continues to, do, to be the case, there will be a huge decoupling between reality and these asset prices. Meaning, essentially, we don't need it to decouple. We don't need Bitcoin to decouple. We need asset. It, we need Bitcoin to grow in value. We would like that. But essentially, I believe that Bitcoin will do tremendously well, even if it stays with the growth of these equities markets, because these equities markets are set to explode and continue to grow in what could be a spiral that that is hard to stop. Uh, so there is a very real possibility that this is a bull cycle that doesn't actually repeat, uh, because there can't be a mechanism to bring down the value of those assets. So there's there's a lot going on, but the macro landscape, I believe, is tremendously bullish for cryptocurrencies, which are providing, of course, outsized gains when you compare them to things like the NASDAQ. Even though there's been the same growth in uh, cryptocurrency market caps, if you were in this coin or that coin, you're seeing 2,000% gains, 5,000% gains, and you know potentially sometimes even more than that, right? So to have seen those gains uh, in certain assets, you're not seeing that. Even Tesla didn't have that kind of gain, right? It had like a 500% gain, uh, you know, or 1,000% or gain. And that's like crazy to a lot of people. So uh, crypto is still where it's at if you want the biggest gains. Altcoins are still the biggest, uh, highest potential for risk, highest potential for reward. And that, and that dynamic has sort of not ceased to exist. So does it need to decouple from the stock market and the equities markets to truly be successful or to give what a lot of the investors want as their reward? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I like Engine. I like Engine Token. Uh, I'm I'm a fan of what they're doing. Um, however, there's going to be a lot of ways to create NFTs, and and I believe that the big games are not necessarily like there's not going to be a situation where Blizzard just says, okay, all the Warcraft coins need to go through Engine, or uh, you know, for example, Call of Duty is just going to do their COD you know items, and they're going to make uh, mint items with engine. These big projects are just going to make their own NFT systems. Uh, and it, it's gotten easier and easier to do that. So to me, it's like, do we need, it, it's an unreasonable proposition to think that there's going to be some unicorn gaming company that just comes onto one of these NFT platforms and makes it explode. I don't think that's the way it's going to work personally. Uh, and that's because, you know, for me, I'm building my own system as well uh, for my game. So it's, it's all interesting, right? Uh, let me scroll up. I missed a super chat. Glad I caught you live with crypto. We all grapple. Never thought I'd say this. I missed that darn pineapple. 
Learn, earn, don't get burned. Actually, yeah, there's a pineapple right over here. Hold on. For all the old school FUD TV fans, this is for you guys. This is for you. Well, I don't know. I feel like we've gone through a lot. I feel like we've covered a lot. Um, I've kind of uh, blabbed about my macro thesis, my micro theses, uh, some really awesome altcoins, one that I just got a bag of, uh, other two that I'm really interested in. So let me know what you guys think about this. Obviously, I appreciate it if you guys smash those likes. It really helps me know that you're enjoying the content and it shows the content to more individuals. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, I'm doing some very, very, uh, very consistent and timely research on the, this market. So I highly encourage you guys to hit the bell notification and subscribe. If you don't hit the bell, you may just miss the video. YouTube is pretty bad about censoring blockchain content. So you very well might miss the video. So I highly encourage you guys to hit that bell, bell up, join the notification squad. As usual, my name's Elio Trades. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode and I'll see you very, very soon.